What's up guys, Mindless again, back with another video. And today uh, I wanted to kind of go over how uh, the gathering went out in Vegas and kind of share my thoughts and the knives I scored while visiting my uh, USN brothers at Planet Hollywood. So um, for those who, who don't know, uh, this past weekend, Labor Day weekend, was the annual Usual Suspects Network gathering, and this was number seven. It's an opportunity for members of the USN to get together and kind of meet each other, trade, and in addition to that, it's a world-class knife show. And uh, all the uh, top makers were there. Obviously, a couple couldn't make it, but uh, the majority of the makers that are relevant right now are there. So I guess the best place to start would be, what are we looking at? And these are the actual scores that I got while at Blade, or rather at the Gathering. And let's just start with those. So the first one I'd like to share with you guys is a new model from a very popular maker, Tim Curry. Uh, Tim won Best New Knife Maker at the Gathering, so congratulations to him. And this piece actually was his personal carry. This is his new model called the Sakari. And I was able to get this right out of his pocket. We were talking, and uh, he was gracious enough to sell me the knife that he was carrying. This is his prototype, I guess, or personal carrying while he uh, tests the new model. And uh, couldn't be couldn't be more stoked to have it in the collection. I, I'm a big fan of Tim's work, and uh, to be able to get his own personal carry is, is kind of an honor. So you're looking at the Sakari frame lock folder. Titanium pivot collar. It's a gorgeous piece. There's his uh, maker's mark on the blade. And this knife, you could see uh, signs of wear, and I think that's what makes it even more valuable to me, at least. So that's the first one. Uh, the next piece is from Gus Sacchini, GTC Knives out of Brazil. And this is his new model called the Stampede. An absolutely beautiful piece. Stunning. Damascus. Uh, bolsters with Mokutai inlay on this side it's a Damascus bolster as well it's actually acting as the over travel stop and uh, more important than anything this is a spring-loaded tab model so SLT fires outstanding so that was from Gus and that was a, a gathering delivery that was delivered to me as soon as I arrived uh, next is from Walter Randolph, this is the Wyvern model. <clears throat> An absolutely beautiful example of it. So, beautiful dammy blade. There you can see his uh, maker's mark. Looks like a copper pivot collar on both sides, backspacer, floating backspacer, and then a Damascus pocket clip as well. But just absolutely stoked to get this. This is one of his lottery pieces. So, was lucky enough to score this and uh, I'll kind of go in more depth of how I got all these pieces and yada 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 but I just wanted to let you uh, know what we're looking at before we get going on the discussion and my thoughts next to that is another Walter Randolph and this is actually the prototype of the uh, small wyvern he made many versions of his blades and this was the prototype for the small version and you can take a look at the uh, makers mark and you could see it labeled as WR prototype and really, truly honored to have this one. Tie handles, zirconium pivot collar, both sides, and zirconium clip, and the zirconium floating backspacer. Action is unbelievable. Typical Walter Randolph perfection. Uh, next up was an open bid piece over at Sean Kendrick's uh, table. This is a full dress ruiner with a boomerang. Damascus Boomerang Mokutai. And uh, for those of you don't, who don't know who uh, Sean Kendrick is, he's hugely popular, gaining popularity by the day. And I can see why these pieces are just made perfectly. And to have such a hardcore, aggressive piece uh, done in uh, a dress model, just over the moon stoked with it. So really really proud to be able to get this one and uh, this one was an open bid that I won. Uh, next up is from uh, Kirby Lambert out of uh, Canada. This is his mini dress blitz 
with Damasteel and Mokotai. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous gentleman's carry. Zircon zirconium over travel stop, disc, zirconium clip. And then you can see on the backspacer, it's also Mokotai floating backspacer. And guys, this thing is executed perfectly and very different style for Kirby. Honestly, stoked to have it. This was a lottery piece. And the final piece uh, that I was able to score and probably the, uh, the Mac Daddy of all the pieces I got while there was, this is Todd Rexford, his open bid entropy model and pff, unbelievable. I'm probably going to do a video just on this piece alone because there's so much to talk about. Custom made pivot, Timascus inlays, darkened tie, Timascus clip. And the action, guys, is just phenomenal. Absolutely stoked to get this piece. This is one of the pieces that I actually traveled, you know, planning to, to bid after. And there's a cool story behind it. And I'm just stoked that it's in my collection now. Again, absolutely perfection. Nothing less than perfection from Todd Rexford. So, The Gathering. It is quite a different beast than Blade Show. So for you, um, so you know the background, I've never been to a gathering before, and um, I was very much looking forward to meeting all these guys that I, I you know, interact with regularly on the USN, and this is the way to do it. If you compare Blade Show to The Gathering, The, the Gathering, literally, like no exaggeration, is probably a tenth of the size of The Blade Show, where Blade Show has makers from... You know, sword makers and old timey fixie style knives and, you know, slippies and all that stuff. At the gathering, it's a little bit more um, tactical blades that, you know, from makers that we all know and love and who are, who's popular. I mean, obviously, there are guys that are making slip joints and stuff, but they are names that you, you, that are relevant today. And I think that's a big, big difference. So every single table you go by, you recognize the maker there. Um, so let's just start how, how I'll go over how the weekend went. So I, uh, flew out from Southern California to Vegas Thursday evening and the show actually runs Friday all day and Saturday all day. So, you know, obviously I'm flying, so I wasn't able to bring any pieces with me. Um, I could have driven, but I didn't feel like sitting in traffic on Thursday evening to get to Vegas. So I flew out and, um, before I flew out, I spoke with uh, Sako, my one of my good buddies and dealers, and um, let him know that hey, I'm coming into town. I don't have any pieces on me. I need a knife like ASAP. I'm having like separation anxiety. So as soon as I arrived, uh, I took delivery of this new model, the Stampede from from Sako. He delivered it on behalf of uh, Gus. And so the story is, uh, Gus sent the pieces to. Sako to carry in, uh, you know, he sent them ahead of time and directly to Sako and Sako brought all of Gus pieces to Vegas since he was driving and he had security and it was safe to do so. When the pieces arrived with Sako, um, I was offered this piece and this is a few weeks prior to the gathering show and I absolutely jumped on it. I mean, obviously I'm a, I'm a big fan of the spring loaded tab, but also this is a new model for uh, GTC knives and Excited to get in my collection. And by the way, this actual model, Gus, uh, won best knife of show. It was the Stampede. So, you know, when I took delivery of this, I knew it was something special. By the end of the weekend, I knew this was uh, best knife of uh, the Gathering 2015. So just absolutely honored to have it in my collection. And uh, we'll do a video on that one, on this piece specifically as well. So you get to Vegas, you hang out, you, you go to the Cove, and immediately you're struck by how many people you recognize by name. You know, everybody gets a name tag. Here, let me show you. Um, you get a name tag like this, and everybody's, like, screen name is right on top. And honest to God, it's almost, like, insulting not to stop and introduce yourself because everybody is so absolutely friendly. This is where the major differences between Blade and the gathering. I had, I met within the first hour of arriving to Vegas at the Cove, pretty much everybody I interact with. And it was it's just an on, honest, absolute pleasure to meet all you guys. I, I hope you're watching 
and I wanted to uh, thank you for your hospitality and how kind everybody was. Anyway, so you're at the Cove, and immediately you're looking around, and you're seeing all the normal guys. You see Laffer and all these guys mingling with makers, so it's an opportunity to talk with them. But the trading has already begun. People are bringing out the pieces. A lot of guys drove and brought knives with them, and, and you can just see deals going on throughout the floor. And the gathering was held at Planet Hollywood, and what they did was they took out, like, basically a nightclub. They, they rented out an area that was you know, for a private event and you had to show your credentials to get in. So it was a very safe kind of knife friendly environment where you can really geek out and share, you know, share your thoughts about knives without feeling like you're just some kind of weirdo talking about knives. So for that, I'm just truly grateful. I was able to fully geek out and let, you know, my knifey hobby go buck wild. So Thursday night, kind of hang out in the cove late night and I'm cruising back to the hotel. I stayed at a different hotel. And early uh, Friday morning, everybody rushes back to uh, the, I guess it's a con conference hall inside Planet Hollywood. And the line, you know, you get your credentials and you kind of queue up to get into the show. Which I found odd because there weren't too many first come first serve pieces, but the line was like literally a few hundred deep. So I, rather than waiting in the line, I just kind of hung back, chatted with some more guys and, uh, the show began right around 10 a.m. And right as it started, it was just awesome. You hit the floor. You know, everybody's got their lotteries out. Everybody's got their open bids out. And it's on. From then on, it's on. So quickly, you know, I had my list of stuff that I was looking after or looking to get to take home with me. Hit up those makers. Um, got an opportunity to meet some great makers and chat rather than just through Instagram. I had a chance to speak with Tim, with Nalu. Uh, with Todd Rexford and just kind of get to know them as, as people more and kind of discuss the knives that you're going to be bidding on. Uh, it's an important thing when you're going open bid to kind of know what you're bidding on, make sure you understand exactly what you're buying. But I spent the entire day doing that on Friday. Now, that afternoon, the first of the lotteries began and, and, and certain open bids started to happen, uh, to, to close. So, at that point, I was just carrying this this piece. Once I started talking to Tim Curry, you know, he had all his pieces on his table, and what caught my eye was the actual piece in his pocket. And like I do always, I, I made an offer. I said, hey, is this for sale? He said, no. I made an offer. He said, yes. So thanks, Tim. I appreciate it. And quickly, I had these two knives in my pocket within an hour of the show starting. Cruised over to uh, Sean's uh, Kendrick's table, kind of had a chance to chat with him. He was sitting next to Horton, too, caught up with him as well, and began to kind of formulate my plan on if I'm going to go for this and watch the price closely, because open bid pieces are ten are known to kind of go a little little crazy on the price points. But, you know, if you're there and you're traveling and if, you know, you're going to go home with a piece, you, you, you really should go home with a piece that you want. So this caught my eye and I knew that, hey, I want to take it down. And then this piece. This was the Friday open bid for Todd Rexford. He had it set up where there was one knife on Friday and two on Saturday. This was the piece I was going after. So anyway, I'll come back to that in just a second. So continuing to meet a bunch of people. The great part is a lot of people, just by looking at your name tag, recognize who you are too. So it's a very friendly atmosphere. And uh, I mean, so different of an animal than Blade Show. Almost don't even want to go back to Blade. I will, but the gathering for me is much more my style. So the show ended around 6 p.m. and everybody heads back to the Cove. And that, that evening in the Cove was the Emerson Lottery, which lasted a couple hours. It was crazy. But it was the evening where we got to sit down with other makers and collectors, like-minded, you know, knifey types. Had a few drinks, a bunch of laughs, and, you know, basically... Stayed up late, hanging out with buddies and enjoying myself. So Saturday morning opens up and the show starts right around the same time, around 10 a.m. Cruised in there and uh, my flight was leaving that same day. So I, only, I knew I only had a few hours on the show floor. Um, and I was able to, you know, finish off this collection. These two Randolphs came out of it. Now, kind of... Wanted to talk about, because I was asked this a lot while on the show floor, was how was I able to get a lot of these pieces um, 
because some people went there and had no luck with lotteries and went home with no knives and you know the open bids sometimes got out of hand the the short and sweet answer fellas is you need to talk to your fellow collectors and the makers and kind of I mean obviously you got to have the money ready to go to purchase the knives and that's something that I think a lot of people forget to prepare you know a couple weeks ahead of the show a couple weeks ahead of going to gathering I began to move my collection around to free up cash to un because I understood I wanted to go after a Rexford. So that's something I want to talk about. And I, it's important to know that prior to any major knife show, you know, you're going to, you're going to start to see other collectors offloading pieces from their collection to free up cash. And that provides a very good opportunity to score very rare pieces. So ahead of the gathering by a week or two, I, I, you know, spoken or got in touch with Socko and um, Scott, the Blade Junkie, different dealers in the industry and let them know, hey, I'm interested in buying pieces. If you see anything that kind of matches my style, come across your, you know, your hotline, let me know. And um, it's an opportunity to score rare pieces that sometimes never go on sale. So that being said, the hunt began and I'm not showing those pieces here, but I was able to score a couple pretty badass knives prior to the show. Now, at the show, it's important, fellas, before you go there to do a little bit of homework and understand what pieces each maker is going to bring to the show. So prior to going there, I knew Todd Rexford was going to be bringing this gorgeous piece as well as another entropy. Um, and I decided at that time, I'm going to go after it. So I knew I needed to bring, you know, X amount of dollars to play in this, the Rexford game. So I did that. Um, I also knew that Sean Kendrick was was doing this full, full dress ruiner. Now this, these guys, these makers were posting this information on Facebook, on the USN, on different forums, kind of showing ahead of the show what they were bringing. Uh, Walter Randolph did the same. So I knew rather than just kind of cruising around and seeing what caught my eye, I, there were there were particular pieces that I wanted prior to even arriving in Vegas, and. Um, that way you kind of can budget yourself because sometimes, I mean, you have great opportunities to pick up pieces, but what you end up doing is kind of blowing your wad and not being able to go after the pieces that you traveled for. So that's a really important step in all these knife shows is know exactly what you're going after prior to arriving. Okay. Now, while there also, all the dealers are represented. So Recon One, Blade Junkie, Steel Addiction, Knifeology, Knife Art, they're all there as well. And and those dealers are there mainly to pick up uh, inventory for the next few months for their stores. But also, a lot of guys win lotteries and will buy the piece even if they don't want it, run it over to a guy like Sako and sell it to him um, for maybe like a small profit. It's important if you're in a buying position and you're going after certain pieces to kind of correspond with those brokers. Scott, uh, let me use Sako specifically. Sako from Recon One knew exactly the pieces that I was looking for. And even though I didn't win the lottery, I wanted to kind of hedge my bet and see if there was any way I can get it from someone who may have won the lottery. And that's a perfect example is this, is this Kirby. Uh, I did not win the lottery, but I wanted this piece. And when the gentleman who won the lottery got it, he ran it over to Sako. Immediately, Sako knew that I was interested in it. He let me know he, he had acquired it, and I told him, I'm taking it. So I was able to get a lottery piece uh, for a very good price while still at the show. Now, nothing is more, you know, the, the best example of that would be this. So once I started bidding on the entropy, I quickly began to see the people I was bid get, you know, bidding against were friends of mine. And one of the guys who is really going after it is a very good friend of mine, a collector that I respect greatly. Todd, you know, killer, killer Instagram feed. I'll put a link to it down there, but just a really, a guy with great taste in knives. So I saw that he was going after it, so I decided to back off and I would go after the uh, open bid the following day because there was two entropies. And he kind of knew I wanted a knife too because obviously he saw that I was bidding on it. When he won the open bid, within an hour, I think after handling the knife and carrying it, he knew that it wasn't for him. And Sako knew that I wanted this piece, so a deal was quickly struck, 
and I was able to get this piece at the same price effectively that the winner of the open bid paid. So I didn't pay over what the auction price was. So just absolutely stoked. Sometimes guys, patience is what gets you the knife. You know, you may, you may lose the piece initially off the maker's table, but if you really want it, you know, it, I would actually go to that, the winner of the piece and say, Hey, if you ever want to sell it, or if you want to move it right now, I'm ready to pay. So I was able to get that. This was just an open bid piece. It was uh, for this Kendrick. It was myself and one other bidder. And um, I had to have it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'll make a I think I'm going to make a video specifically just on this piece as well. Uh, Sean Kendrick is doing amazing stuff and his popularity is growing by leaps and bounds. So that's how you get down, guys. Now, at the end of the first night when I was in the cove is when these pieces started to become available to me. Um, this piece was, this prototype wyvern for the small one was a deal that was struck between Walter Randolph and Sacco. And Sacco knew that I was interested in, you know, the piece I was on uh, Walter Randolph's table. So he quickly offered it to me and uh, you know I jumped on this. I mean, how rare is it to get an, within the maker's mark, the word mark prototype in absolutely perfect condition. So I was able to score this piece that way through a dealer on a deal directly with the maker. It, it's basically at the end of the day, you, ha you have to do what you have to do to get the pieces you want. And um, that doesn't always mean again, that you're winning the open bid or winning the lotto. If you see somebody win the lottery and yeah, it's true, there's, there's, I think in the knife game, there's a lot of uh, buyer's remorse that occurs when you pay high prices for knives. So if you're standing right there saying, I'll make you whole, sell me that knife, Honestly, 30% of the time that the winner of the lottery or the open bid will say, you know what, I got into a pissing contest and yada, 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 make me whole, I'll sell the knife to you. So, but that takes patience. It's, it's tempting to run into the show and start dropping money all over the place and, um, you know, start taking down knives right away, but that's not always the best way to do it. So advice for guys going to shows in the future be patient know exactly what you're going after while at the show maybe have a little bit of contingency cash for any pieces that jump out at you you know that look amazing to you at the time that you know, while you're there but definitely know what you're going after before you arrive that way you can budget accordingly and for me i, I honestly for a first gathering show i feel as though i scored some of the the most uh beautiful pieces that were offered up period uh, for me i think this kendrick was getting a lot of attention uh, this entropy was getting a lot of attention randolph's work was getting a huge amount of attention gus winning uh, best knife of show and tim winning best new maker i think these knives represent what the best gathering seven had to offer so truly stoked to have it have to be able to come home with all these pieces so forgive the rambling I kind of want to give you a background on how these pieces went and the main difference between the gathering and uh, the blade show. The next show coming up that I'm going to be at is the tactical knife invitational. And from what I understand, that's even a smaller show. We're talking about maybe a hundred or 200 attendees uh, vying for knives from about 20 makers. So the odds of winning lotteries, you know, increases uh, dramatically, but it's very difficult to score tickets to TKI. So, but again, just like the advice I'm giving you guys here about going to a show prior to going to TKI, I'm going to make sure to uh, be, prepared, be prepared, know exactly which pieces I'm going after, and uh, have the budget to play with that. So, guys, uh, forgive me for no video last week. I was in Vegas. Um, I'll try to catch up and throw an extra video down. But thanks for taking the time of your day to uh, check out the scores from The Gathering and my thoughts on it. And um, I appreciate all the kind words everybody said about the uh, YouTube channel while at the gathering. I appreciate you guys really you know, taking the time and watching these videos and allowing me to share these absolutely beautiful pieces. But uh, talk to you guys on the next video. Take it easy.